Hey everyone, Upkex here and welcome to the 2017 Season 2 uh, series on my channel of The Road to Grandmaster uh, where we're going to start off here in our placement games. We're actually starting in placement game 8, I'll come back to that in a second, why I'm doing that. Uh, but yeah, starting in the placement games and then climbing all the way from the placements up to hitting Grandmaster in Hero League. Um, so yeah, this is, I think this is the fourth season. I've been, I've been doing this for a while. Um, so looking forward to, to diving into this with you guys uh, once again here. Actually, I suppose it's the fifth season technically. And then there's a road to rank one as well. But um, yeah, we're hopping in a Sky Temple. I'm hoping to first pick Genji, an Uberak ban. That's brilliant. Uh, an Uberak, I still think best tank overall. Uh, not by as huge of a margin as before. The little nerfs to him have toned him back down. Um, and then to hack a ban away by the enemy team. That's also a good ban for them, but this leaves us up to pick up the Genji, which is very nice indeed. I think Genji is fantastic here. I'm gonna be talking all about him in this game and showing you guys you know, how to play him and, and everything like that. I had a team league game with Genji up recently where it's some live commentary. In this one, I'm gonna be a bit more technical and break down some of the mistakes and things like that. So I, I do make a few little derpy mistakes in this game. Um, we'll, we'll see, it's interesting. I mean, <laughs> placement games, oh boy, oh boy. Um, I, like, when you're at the, like, very high end of MMR, an MMR, like, reset, even a soft reset, is, it, it, like, you, you don't get any better games. All it does is make all your games worse. Kind of similarly, if you're at the very bottom of the MMR spectrum, uh, your games can only get better, right? So, it's been pretty painful, and this one definitely has some Clown Fiesta elements to it. But certainly, this has been an awesome start to the draft for us and a terrible start to the draft for the enemy team. So first pick Genji, they let off with a Nazebo and Vala. Neither hero particularly strong against Genji, like no counter picks to that. So that is just great news for us. And we get the Uther, which is huge, right? Uther, not only is he the best support in the game right now, he is the best support in the game to combo with Genji, and he's the best support in the game to pick against Genji. So I was kind of preparing myself for a fairly tough game, a fairly challenging game going up against uh, against an Uther pick, seeing as I first picked the Genji, but you know, happy days, they actually uh, didn't take it. Instead, they did the worst thing you can do, choose your two range damage first, and uh, nice, we get that. Uh, our team captain did a good job, bans out the Malfurion, so that's, you know, another nightmare situation for Genji. Twilight Dream, boom, three seconds silence, your Dragon Blade is ruined, right? Your Genji Heroic is ruined and you're stuck there, you can't use your mobility to escape. So, the two supports that Genji really struggles against are gone, which is fantastic. And um, yeah, we have the Uther to support us. Also, I love the Zera tool pick. I think it's really cool. Again, I think that really punishes them for the Nazebo and the Vala. Both heroes very vulnerable to Zera tool. Uh, Zera tool, just a great hero overall. And we've already set ourselves up for this super intense like dive comp. We can just dive and wreck their face. We can just wipe them out. Um, enemy team grabs Leoric and Tyrael. At this point, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm like, ha ha ha, look at your team with no crowd control for Genji. This is setting me up for an absolutely fantastic Genji game. This is brilliant news. I'm very happy about this, actually. Very, very happy. Uh, we get ETC, which is fantastic. It looks like we're thinking of, whoops, I just dropped a pen. We're looking at a potential Sonya. I don't think he picks the Sonya. I think it'll be okay. Uh, he's actually going to go for Artanis. I actually really like this choice as well. So Artanis can also kind of dive in a fair bit. Um, he's also with amateur opponent, should be very good at soloing temples. Uh, I think also with, with just, I think Artanis does actually do really well against Leoric in the lane. Leoric just can't get through the Artanis shields. So that actually makes for a nice solo lane for us. The ETC pick is actually not too bad either. They have very few interrupts. The Oriel last pick for them gives them an interrupt to Mosh Pit. Um, but also she's another hero that's terrible against the Genji. Super vulnerable to being dived and being blown up. So yeah, there you go. I think a very, very bad draft for the enemy team. A nice draft for us, and we're set up well for this particular game. However, not everything goes that well for us. We'll see when we get to the game, so I'll talk to you guys in a second. All right, guys, and here we are loading into Sky Temple with the Genji for the first placement game I'm putting up on my channel. Uh, I actually forgot to say in the draft, right? But uh, the first seven placement games, I actually did it on stream. Uh, so I'm going to stick them up on my second channel on Nub Streams. Um, you can just see me kind of crumbling under the clown fiesta of the placement games quite a bit. Uh, going into this one, we actually have a negative win rate uh, so far. I'll kind of keep, um, no, like uh, three and four so far going into this game here. So it's not been going too well. Like I said, it's been pretty clown fiesta, but this is looking like it should be a good one for us. We've got a good draft. 
I actually noticed on the loading screen the Vala had like the master portrait as her highest rank. So that's like, again, it's great news for me. I'm kind of looking at going awesome stuff. Like we could, like kill the Vala is definitely a very real possibility. In fact, uh, speaking of, <laughs> she actually just, I forgot that happened. <laughs> that's appropriate. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have such a great composition for just diving and killing them. Um, like if you look at our draft and you look at their draft, like how is it gonna work? Well, we, we just we just dive their, their team and we just wreck them, right? Zeratul can split them up with VP. Uh, I mean, I can go in with Dragon Blade. They've got so little CC. Leoric cannot peel for a team. He's really bad at peeling. He's great at fighting warriors, sure, but Artanis can actually put up a great fight against him. Um, I mean, they just, the, the Tyrael has got no CC. I mean, he can somewhat protect his team with Sank, but it's gonna be difficult. So there's a lot of, of stuff that's going really well for us already, I would say, in this game. Uh, now, as Genji, uh, we're not the strongest early on in the game. It's gonna take us a little while to sort of hit our power spikes. I mean, level 10 is the huge one. Um, so, you know, early game, we're not gonna be doing too much. I mean, our wave clear is pretty bad. Basically, Genji in terms of laning, I mean, compare him to Vala, for example, right? Vala's got more damage output uh, at range as well. She's got more wave clear. Um, and she, that's, that's, I think there's a pretty good difference between the two, right? Uh, Genji is very mobile though, right? He's very hard to kill and he's very good at ganking and roaming between lanes. So that's something that we're gonna be looking to do. Uh, right here, uh, just gonna steal the first few shots of this and then just back off, not really looking to do any more than that. Artan is gonna take the top temple. So we're, we should, we're basically expecting to trade temples here. I mean, ETC is so lame down bottom against the Oryx. So, I mean, we don't have our tank, we don't have our CC here. We're not expecting much more out of this. And that's just fine. We're happy to trade the temples. We got a few extra shots because I stole the first few ones off their temple. And that's all well and good. Again, we're not looking to make any major plays early in the game. It's an option, but it's nothing we need to do. I mean, level 10 is just gonna be huge for us. I mean, Artanis doesn't really, his ult is kind of terrible, but um, our, our other ults like VP, Dragon Blade, Mosh Pit, I think he goes for, uh, and then Uther. Like we've got some of the biggest playmaking ults in the game. So we've got plenty going for us here. This is pretty nice. Uh, all right, so my Genji talent build at level one, I do like, yeah, Uther oversteps there, unfortunately. We're gonna get out because we're Genji. Uh, and our Thomas did secure the shrine. So yes, we lost the Uther kill, which is unfortunate. Um, I was gonna tap a well, decide not to for the mana, because uh, Uther was healing us up. I'm just gonna like mess around here and I just trade against an Azebo. Um, I'll come back to the talents in a second. Just like the idea here of me in the lane is look, Nazebo doesn't even push it that hard and we can dodge most of his spells so we can just bully him quite a bit. Normally Genji's terrible so laner, but against Nazebo, Nazebo's also pretty terrible so it's not really much of a problem. Level one picking up Agile Dismount is the talent of choice. This, uh, when we're mounted, it reduces um, uh, the cooldown of our, our um, whatchamacallit, Cyber Agility, our jump, our trace, our D button. It will uh, reduce the cooldown of that by five seconds if we jump off our mount and it also increases our mount, uh, uh, the jump distance when we go off our mount by 70%, which is a pretty big deal. There you go, you can see me jumping over the wall. It's just a little bit shorter than your E, than your Swift Strike. I mean, it's pretty far. Uh, and the fact that it gives you that reduced cooldown on your trade as well, half cooldown off when you jump from your horse, um, it basically lets you engage with your trait, which is really, really useful, okay? It's really, really useful. Um, so we can, for example, a good sort of tra uh, way of harassing with Genji will be to use our D to jump behind the enemy team. We can throw a few of our Qs into them, uh, maybe deflect some damage with our W or deflect, and then we can E back through to safety uh, and just get a little bit of harass like that, kind of poking away as Genji. It can be uh, pretty nifty. Um, right here, uh, I was kind of like, the uh, team is a bit all over the place. Like, Zeratul wants to do the Bruiser Camp. I mean, uh, our uh, Artanis is the, the hero that's gonna be doing mercs and he was actually doing the bottom siege camp and actually stopped for some reason as well. But Artanis is gonna be the hero that's doing all of that stuff. Um, so we really don't want to, uh, yeah, we want to do it with him. <laughs> so that's a, kind of a mess. And now we're moving into this second temple phase and this is a, a bit of a disaster in terms of the way we've been moving around the map. The enemy team has got two merc camps and we actually got none right there. Um, kind of a failure by the team in, in terms of moving around the map. So that's definitely like a bit of a bit of a clown fiesta mistake right there, just not knowing how to do um, basically objectives on Sky Temple, which is a very formulaic uh, uh, map reading really when it comes down to it. You can see diving in on the Vala, just focusing basic attacks on her, focusing our Q on her, and uh, Zeratul actually there to finish up the kill. That's 
the Genji Zertul combo, very scary, can dive super aggressively, has a lot of burst damage and kill pressure, and we're able to output tons of damage and force the enemy team off. Artanis is securing the temple with the two heroes dead for the enemy team. And uh, Azevo early game, they're finding it just too difficult to push in. And uh, Zeratul runs to the top and he's going to uh, clear out that Merc camp. We're just gonna be able to walk away from this. Temple secured, nice, nice, nice. And we've actually got ourselves the XP lead. So that works out really well. Basically the, the terrible map movements being uh, kind of compensated for by just the fact that we've got a much better draft and that our Zeratul player seems fairly decent at at least the Zeratul mechanics when it comes to the team fight. So that's working out great for us so far. I'm gonna do a bit of harass there with Genji and then E out. Vala jumps forward, misses her spells, which is nice. Uh, level four, do pick up Shuriken Mastery. This is our quest, you can see in the bottom left there, to hit heroes with our Shurikens. Uh, the first part is to hit 35 heroes. We're just short of that. When we do, our Shuriken damage is increased by 30. So it really it ups the damage we do with our Q, which is fantastic. Then after hitting 75 heroes, it makes our Cyber Agility, our jump, refund two charges of Shuriken. So this is, is really, really nice. It's just an extra chunk of damage that we can bring out. You actually do a lot of burst damage with the shuriken. Um, if you hit a hero with three shuriken, it, it really hurts. It really adds up. Um, so Genji does a surprising amount of damage going in like that. We're gonna pop Dragon Blade here. Unfortunately, the Artanis uh, messed up and I messed up there missing the Tyrael. Total fail by me. Um, but yeah, Artanis actually swapping the Oriel out of the mosh pit, turned that from being a beautiful mosh pit from ETC that would have just crazily snowballed this game into, you know, continuing the lead, but not not all that nuts. Uh, Zeratil moves in from behind. We're able to jump in as well with his help. We maybe could have kept diving there, but I was a bit cautious. I just, I felt like it might've been a bit too much of a risk. But yeah, uh, Artanis flip, flipped the Oriel out of the mosh pit. And so instead of us being able to hit all three heroes with Dragon Blade and just melting them, uh, Oil got out of it. We could only hit the two heroes, and then our Zeratul and our Tanis were kept busy trying to chase the Oriel down. So that was unfortunate. Kind of, uh, you know, a misplay from our Tanis, but I feel honestly that one's relatively understandable. And, you know, uh, in my opinion, that's the kind of misplay that's kind of bad luck. He'd already kind of mentally queued up his brain to flip in the Oriel. He'd aimed it, he was in the process of doing it when the mosh pit hit, and he just didn't have the time to kind of cancel the command and input a new one, as it were. So that's okay, we'll make do. Now our team is going for a big engage. If you look at our ult, so we're missing several, like we're 10 seconds or so off, actually having Dragon Blade and uh, Sank, so that's pretty scary for us. Again, like Vala out of position, so we're gonna focus her down. Uh, there's just, like, you can see, every team fight we just go kill the Vala, and what can they do? Really nothing. Now Oriel's gonna go down. Uh, Nazebo went down as well in that fight. I mean, just like, what can they do? <laughs> Basically, what can they do? There's there's nothing that they can do. Um, however, this is where things go wrong. Okay, so look, we've killed four members of the enemy team. All they have left is Lior, who wasn't even there. He's bottom. Uh, so this is the perfect opportunity to go take the boss. By the way, uh, level 13, you did pick up Shingan. And this means that, watch this, screw up, walk in. This is me getting just super... My brain is melting from the position that our teammates have taken on the temple. I'll explain what's going wrong here in a second. But Shingen, if we hit a, a target with all three shuriken, we walk into the boss then and die like a noob. Uh, we do a big chunk of bonus damage, quite a lot of bonus damage. Um, so basically with the shuriken mastery at four and with Shingen at 13, we're gonna actually hit really hard with the three shuriken if we do hit someone with that. It's a substantial amount of burst damage. You'll see that throughout the game. Actually, you become very strong at killing bosses and objectives with Genji once you have actually this, the Shingen talent. It's very strong. Uh, but yeah, that was a total clown fiesta disaster, including me. Uh, but, I mean, we get four kills. It's the perfect opportunity to go take the boss. Just fantastic. We run in, get the boss. Great, then we can snowball the game. Uh, we get the temple and it's fantastic. <laughs> ETC doesn't know what's gone wrong. So you can see I'm saying you did actually, because uh, it looks, is true. This is a disaster. The healer and the tank, I mean, maybe we could have pulled it off if one of them went to the temple and started securing the shots and then we burned down the boss with the other ones. But the fact that two of them went, it was gonna be a disaster. We didn't have the, we wouldn't have had the HP because we were doing it with relatively squishy heroes. We wouldn't have had the HP because uh, it was me and Zeratul at the start for a good while to actually take the boss or, or the damage to do it quick enough. It's just a disaster. Um, and then you see me kind of, uh, definitely frustration, definitely some frustration and uh, then just brain overloaded trying to work out, oh God, how do we do the boss if our tank and our healer don't come to do it when they should have? And also trying to work out, well, what do they, how do they think this is a good idea? What's going on? So that frustration until 
playing a huge role and making uh, me screw up hugely, not only getting hit by the boss stun once, which is a pretty terrible mistake, which should never ever happen, but actually getting hit by the boss twice and dying from it, total screw up basically, total screw up. Uh, we're gonna fight a big bit against the orc. I'm just using him for stacks uh, at the moment <laughs> for my level four. Uh, I mean, we're getting a good trade against him as well. Uh, he's actually gonna run away, so nice. Loads of damage on the orc and a bunch of quest stacks for me. Uh, Mosh Pit goes out, promptly gets cancelled. Our Tannis isn't here, so I don't really know why we're trying to force this fight. It's very risky. We're going to pop Dragon Blade to synergize with the VP. I'm going in deep here. We're just doing as much damage as we can, chasing the Fala as well. Crystal Aegis does save her. I'm low on life. Jump over the wall. Divine Shield comes out. It was very late. Uh, actually, I'd been watching that fight back to figure out how that went so wrong. Um, he, he zoned himself out off the Gargantuan. Should have just pushed through it. Again, made somewhat complicated by the fact that our Tannis wasn't there. Um, nice, actually, little cleanse from Uther at the end, right? So Uther picked up cleanse because the enemy team doesn't have any stuns or silences, which I think is smart. Uh, somewhat, you know, the fact that they have no stuns means that they're not that good against Uther, but then the fact that they've got no stuns means that they're rubbish against Genji and Zeratul, so uh, sucks for the enemy team. Slightly sucks for Uther, but I like the cleanse from him. I mean, it didn't do anything, but, you know, it's that sort of situation where you go, fuck it, I'll just spend the cooldown. It's only a cleanse, really. So I'll just cleanse my hero just in case there's some sort of slow or something I haven't considered. I mean, we've killed multiple members of the enemy team anyway, so just to try to ensure Genji gets out, we'll cleanse him. Nice, I like it. I think it's cool. Um, dodge at 7. I don't know if I said that, but you can see it, obviously. Dodge at 7. It's going to be great against Fala and just in general. Super good talent. Uh, be good against the Auric and Spectral Leech if he gets that at some stage. Um, and then 16 went for final cut, so this does like this, sort of uh, leaves this mark on the ground which explodes and does a bit of bonus damage um, after we use our E. Now we don't quite have Dragon Blade, but the enemy team is very out of position. We do have level 16 advantage as well, so we're actually able to push in and uh, kind of dive them relatively aggressively uh, as we come into this temple phase, as they're trying to, to fight us over the temples. That's all right, we're going to come clear out this temple. Uh, and um, uh, importantly, we've got our heroics coming up now. So we have Dragon Blade, we've got VP, we have Divine Shield, and, and Mosh Pit's going to be up shortly. So that's all good. We're going to pop our Dragon Blade here. That's a good Sanctification from them. That's a good Crystal Aegis as well. Good Divine Shield this time. We're going to finish off Oriel just about. There we go. Try to dash through the Nazebo, but he actually jukes to the top, which I wasn't expecting properly. Uh, just chose the wrong direction there. So Nazebo escapes, but we do pick up three kills, which is fantastic. No boss for a minute, ten seconds. So we're just going to take um, take out these temples. That's all good. Just trying to do as much damage as we can here with our abilities. Um, the jump, the cyber agility jump there is unnecessary. That's just reflex because, again, with our level 4 quest, once we've got 75 stacks, using that cyber agility will refund us uh, two charges of our shuriken. And with the damage from shuriken master uh, mastery plus shin gun, that will add up to an awful lot of damage. So we've secured the end of this uh, shrine. We're going to clear out this... Uh, wave, get a little bit of XP, got a Hearthstone back for mana and for HP, level 18 to 15, uh, and the boss is coming up soon, plus the siege camps down bottom, so that's definitely where we want to put our focus now, is uh, trying to secure those camps, maybe even get the enemy team out of position, um, we could force a fight with level 16 advantage, well I mean level 18 to 15 advantage, it's huge, um, and then, you know, possibly get a boss off of that as well, we're going to help our Tannis finish this off, Uther had been in top lane actually, so... Uh, Artana's going for the Bruiser camp, playing it fairly passive here. Uh, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, the boss is definitely a concern at this point, but uh, nothing we need to worry about too much, really. I mean, we, we can play it relatively passive here, I suppose. I suppose. With uh, Leoric being up top, I'm picking to start on the boss. Okay. Our teammates actually find them, someone out of position. I was thinking we could just force the boss and switch around, seeing as the orc is out of position. We could burn it down super fast with the comp that we've got, and then we could do it. Uh, now it's too late for the boss, though. But I think that was actually worthwhile from the team, uh, seeing as they baited out Crystal Aegis and, and got the enemy team really low. Uh, they might have got some other ults off, I'm not sure. But I think that makes this kind of worthwhile. You can see here, I'm just kind of lurking on the side, uh, not spending my cooldowns fully quite yet, because I'm just waiting for the enemy team. Gonna pop Dragon Blade, have that ready for when they come out of this. Uh, gonna go in and follow. That's actually very early on the Divine Shield this time, but it's not the worst. Uh, we're just gonna do as much AoE damage here as we can. Uh, we only kill Leoric. But still, that's not too bad for us. 
uh, moving in back towards the boss with that kill. Now the bad news is Luark will respawn back in here, so we want to be very careful about that. Enemy team goes way out of position. Beautiful flip from Martanis. Gets them caught behind us. We're going to jump over here, and we're going to burn the Vala down. She is dead. Uh, Nazebo is the next target for us. He goes down. Going to E out so that Tyrael cannot get any return damage. And now this is where huge mistake number two happens. This is perfect boss opportunity. I'm saying like, be right back, boss, boss, boss. Stop chasing them, go boss. This is the perfect boss opportunity. Their Nazebo and their Vala, their two damage dealers are dead. And we've got all of ours, plus a, a good boss killing team with Genji and Zeratul and Artanis. Like we'll kill it so quickly. Uh, but our team don't want to do it. I was like, oh my God, what does it take to do a boss on Sky Temple? What does it take? Uh, apparently we're scared of level 16 Tyrael. I don't know. Like, I mean, sure, Holy Ground can steal a boss, but look, I mean, Tyrael, Leoric, Oriel, that's what they've got to try stop us doing a boss. We've got Kenji, Zeratul, ETC, Artanis. It's like, if they try to stop us, if Tyrael comes over to try to steal the boss, guess what? We just turn around and we kill all three of them. Super easy. Then we take the boss anyway. Uh, I mean, worst case scenario, honestly, is that we get uh, several kills and they get the boss, and in which case we just kill the boss ourselves and, you know, we're ahead in XP, it's not too bad. But, I mean, like, there's no way that you don't take it. I love that now Zeratul's like do boss as well. Like, this, again, was so baffling to me, all right? Because we got level 20 and now he's like, let's go boss. So this is the question I had at this point in the game. I was like, which would you rather? Do boss level 19 to 16, enemy team only has three heroes, you have all five and they don't have any damage dealers. Or option number two, enemy team has all five heroes, you've got level 20 advantage. I mean, <laughs> level 16, they've got no damage is so much better. I actually get stuck here, that was derpy. I wasn't paying attention and we get stuck behind holy ground and basically I lose out loads of damage on the Vala. Now we're able to kill the Tyrael. Could have actually used my E to dodge here. I didn't think it would hit and actually did catch me on the edge. So a bit of unnecessary damage, but now we're able to run core. But yeah, I just thought this is a placement games. There's like a pretty wide range of skill levels. It gets a little bit derpy from time to time. Uh, right here I didn't notice I got dismounted by the minion, so my jump didn't actually bring me over the wall and look like a noob. Um, but yeah, Wh which, which is better for taking boss? Level 19 to 16, enemy team, both of their damage dealers are dead and you have all five of yours alive. Or level 20 to 17, but they do still, they still have material 16, which was the, apparently the issue last time. They still have that? and all of their heroes are alive. It's so much, It's more risky. I mean, it's still a pretty safe boss play for us because our comp is so much better, right? But it's much more risky. I just thought that was... The decision-making process is bizarre. You can see at the end there as well, I mean, our teammates are for some reason attacking. Again, the ETC Uther, um, the same guys who were fighting on the temple earlier, they're, they're fighting that bottom keep when we should just be on the core, but we just go on the core, and as you see, the core dies before the boss gets anywhere near anyway, and we, we get the win in the end. So yeah, I mean, kind of sums up the placement game experience. A uh, little bit of a clown fiesta, just weird shit happening all the time. Makes me appreciate the teammates I'm normally not happy with. You can see we did loads of damage on Genji. Um, like I said, it was just a perfect Genji game. You know, we had Uther Zeratul, it's just awesome with the Genji and the enemy team. Just their draft was terrible. They have no counters to the Genji. They're super vulnerable. And you can see we just we could just dive them and just tear them apart with Dragon Blade. And they've got absolutely nothing to stop it. Just a total disaster in terms of drafting. Um, we had a few, again, just a few terrible map movements by our team. Just terrible map play and strategic play, uh, which was attempting to give the enemy team sort of advantages back. Uh, but our draft was just so much better that they they, they just couldn't come back in. And, and the Zeratul uh, played, I feel, the team fights particularly well to nice synergy uh, with, with what we were doing and, and the theory there. So, yeah, there you go, guys. That's placement game number eight. Again, if you want to see me getting frustrated live, uh, you can check out the VOD of placement games one to seven. They were pretty rough. All the placement games were pretty rough. Um, it's, I, it's just funny. I mean, I, I think it's a real... Again, I said this during one of the games um, on the live stream, I think like it's a real wake up call. It's a real call to action for you guys watching these videos, right? Because that's what I found, you know, when we're playing placement games and we, we're playing with, you know, people that might actually be, you know, uh, like Diamond D1 or, or low master type standard players. It's like they make so many huge mistakes 
um, like just the ETC and Uther in this game, for example, going on the temple instead of going to boss. It's a terrible mistake. Again, ETC and Uther pushing the bottom keep instead of pushing core. That's a, still a mistake. It wasn't as important in this game, but it's still, you know, it just shows just bad game understanding. Um, me dying to the boss, that's a really derpy mechanical mistake. Really, really fucking derpy. Um, you know, uh, our teammates not taking a boss uh, when two heroes are dead, 19 versus 16, because they're scared of material. I mean, you just turn around and kill them. It's like there's these massive gaps in game knowledge. The enemy team's draft in this game, absolutely terrible. Um, massive gaps in, in game knowledge. And I saw this, this has just been consistent across all the placement games. So it really, what I mean here is that it, it just shows for you guys and it says to you, well, look, if you guys really like learn from these videos and pick up a lot of stuff, and just develop this critical mind and the critical understanding of the game where you can like piece everything together and, and, and just get smart about it, be open-minded, but critically open-minded. It can take you so far. Like you can just be, you can literally like play so much better than even like low level master players. I think pretty easily through just, just having so much better map understanding because there's still huge gaps in, in where those guys go. So that's what I've kind of felt about the placement games. Anyway, we've got two more to go, so we'll see how those go. Stay tuned for them. They should be out tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if it did. And I will see you all next time for some more Heroes of the Storm. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.